No one has sinned against you as much as you've sinned against God. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Richard, and we're going to look at the real St. Valentine coming up next. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is a bonus episode. Normally, I just do these Contra Thoughts on Wednesdays and Fridays, but I just could not resist since today is Valentine's, Valentine's Day, T-Y-M-E-S. No. Um, I hope you're having a great day so far whenever you're watching this. Uh, I am a pastor. I'm a husband and a father. Uh, I live in Kentucky here. went to seminary, uh, graduated a few years ago, and yeah, trying to use this medium to proclaim the truth, to call people out of darkness, to push against people. This is, it's Richard Contramundum is the name there, name of the channel, and that's against the world. Uh, the full title is Promundo, though, Contramundum Promundo. So against the world before the world, because at some point somebody was against me. And they were against you if you love Jesus. They said, your worldview isn't quite square. Uh, you're living not correctly. You're not living in the way that God made you to be. And so, we are called to be followers of Christ, which is hard. It's hard, but we sometimes forget that it's actually also easy. <laughs> it's, it, the burden is light, uh, Jesus tells us. So the God-man became flesh and dwelt among us, and he died a sacrificial death and was raised to newness of life so that we may too die to our death or die to our sin and live to newness of life. So today's Valentine's Day. Uh, I hope you have a uh, plan if you're married, especially if you're a guy, you're going to woo your wife uh, or maybe your girlfriend uh, or your fiance. Um, we're going to talk about Valentine. So St. Valentine, we don't have a ton on him. Uh, third century, there were actually two Valentines that the church remembers. Uh, they were both martyrs. And that's what, just kind of put that in your back pocket for a moment. They were both martyrs, as many were martyrs in the early church. My One of my daughters on the way to school, uh, I guess it was my oldest daughter, she asked about what a martyr was, because I said, oh, he was the first martyr. I'm preaching through Acts, and Stephen's the first martyr. We're going to get to that here uh, in the next couple weeks. And uh, she said, Mur and she thought I said, you know, murdered, because mar was, what's martyr? That's a weird word. And I explained, you know, you're dying for something. People are killing you, not just... They're taking your car or stealing your stuff, and they just murdered you just out of cold blood. But they're killing you because of a particular belief or ideology. Different than even assassination, but that's another video. So these Christians, early Christians, both men and women, young and old, were martyred. So I want us, at minimum, on this Valentine's Day, especially if you love Jesus, but even if you don't, uh, welcome to the channel. This isn't just for Christians, it's for anybody. But people forget, oh, you know, I'm being persecuted, you know, because they, they said something silly. They made fun of me when I was reading my Bible, you know, and this and that. It's like, that's not really persecution. And even if it is, you're not being martyred. Imagine being martyred for your faith. I, I, it's just like, oh, it makes me so uncomfortable and weird because it's wrong, right? And just the sense of, you know, death is an enemy. It's, but it's also sad because Christ is already won. But the enemy still has convinced his, you know, foot soldiers, as it were, who are still marching in the army of darkness to kill people, to harm people, to ridicule people, to fine people, whatever. And we saw this the last, you know, near two years with all the lockdowns and defiant of the lockdowns, whether in Canada or North America in general or Europe or wherever. Both Valentines were martyrs. Um, and the early church, and this is where a lot of the tradition from Eastern Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism and things, they use these as feast days, right? And, and celebrations, remembering the martyrs. Because, you know, it's, you're a martyr for your faith. <laughs> That's kind of a big deal. Uh, and it still happens even today, not maybe in so much Western Europe or in North America, but it happens in other places like Southeast Asia, for example, or even Africa. So remember the martyrs. Remember the martyrs, seriously. Remember the martyrs and know that people take this seriously. And if you're not taking your faith seriously, that's okay. But don't stay there. Repent. Cling back to Christ. Because this world is passing away. So the early church remembers Valentine, both Valentines, on uh, February 14th. And that's really kind of the extent. Now, later on, others kind of added, this is where birds and others found their mate on this particular day. So you kind of get that love aspect. 
So they're remembering their early martyrs, two guys in particular in the third century, both martyred. And then kind of they add the love and the birds and just kind of this and this and this. And then even in, into the 19th century, most believe this is kind of where we see a lot of the commercialization, a lot of the uh, buying and selling is where we get a lot of our Christmas stuff as well. Christmas trees, um, you know, the snow, the Victorian-y type of this is what Christmas, quote unquote, is. Of course, Christmas is all over the world and it's been celebrated for centuries. So it's not, you know, not talking about Santa. That's another video you can check out uh, up here if you want to look at that. But the point is, remember martyrs and remember the love that Christ has for you, despite your sin, right? He, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Remember that, please remember that and proclaim that truth to someone today. Whether it's a simple, how can I pray for you? You know, your coworker or somebody at Starbucks, uh, your neighbor, maybe your unbelieving spouse, your, your friend, whatever. How can I pray for you? Hey, I was reading this text today. This is also another. Hey, I was reading uh, in 1 John, and this is where you're going to do. If you need something to read today, read 1 John. It's only five chapters. Uh, in particular, chapter 2 is kind of, you know, the, the love chapter, as it were. Of course, we could talk about 1 Corinthians 13. We're not. Uh, but that's, all, of course, the, the famous, most famous love chapter. But 1 John do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life are not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away. Remember that. The world is passing away. That's why people can get martyred and say, ah, you know, I'm going to hold on to these things loosely. I don't want to get martyred. You don't want to get martyred, right? But if it happens to you or your great-grandchildren, it's in this world. Right there, there is this redemption coming. A new heavens and a new earth is coming. The world is passing away, along with its desires. But whoever does the will of the God, of God abides for ever. He goes on. First John four in particular is the classic God is love verse. I'll read this mo and we'll wrap up. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God does not know God, because God is love. So this isn't license, right? A lot of people are like, oh, God is love. That means license. I get to do whatever I want. Licentiousness is where we get that word from. You know, just be with whoever you want, sleep with whoever you want, drink whatever you want, go wherever you want, spend your money on however you want, do whatever you want. No, that's not the Christian life at all. Christian liberty is actually slavery to Christ. But he's so much better than being a slave to yourself. Okay? Because God is love. God is love. And his perfect love casts out fear. But it also says here in 1 John 4 that if you haven't loved, you, you don't know God. It's not you might not know God. <laughs> right? If you can't forgive your brother, if you've got a grudge, especially against a Christian, a fellow believer, or a fellow professing believer, right? You have to seriously question where you are with the Lord. Seriously question what is going on in your heart. Because love, this 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 devoted devotional, not a feeling, but an action, this this mental and and which drives your spiritual to say because God first loved me through Christ, I can love I can forgive because he has forgiven me much, right? No one has sinned against you as much as you've sinned against God, okay? No one has sinned against you as much as you have sinned against God. All have sinned. All has fallen short of the glory. And that includes me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't think, well, you know, dumb online preacher guy thinks he's all smart, some dumb Baptist, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. I'm talking to everybody all the time, everybody. You, me, your mom, my mom, my grandma, my wife, my children, your uncle, your great-grandparents, the president, the last president, the other president. <laughs> I mean, everybody. Everybody's fallen short of the glory of God. We're all feeble. We're all fallen sinners. So, in closing, read First John. Uh, it's only five chapters. If you got less time, read just chapter four. But remember St. Valentine. This isn't, you know, hallmarky. This, that was added, of course, later. Buy the car, do the chocolate. I just read somewhere it's like $140 some odd dollars, $143, I think it is the average person spends on 
Valentine's. Okay, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything right with that. <laughs> I'm just saying, great, go buy yourself uh, some chocolates if you don't have somebody. Go buy your wife some flowers. Ladies, you know what your man needs. Whatever that is. Um, and let's, let's worship God today. Okay, redeem it. Don't just, you know, eat your steak and your baked potato uh, or eat the chocolates or be sad that you don't have somebody, but rather rejoice in Christ who so loved, that God so loved the world that he sent him, that he sent Jesus into the world. Okay. Hope you found this helpful. Three-piece special, like, comment, and share. Please, please, please. I appreciate that. And um, until Wednesday... I've got a special video coming up. It's not special, but it's 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 interesting subject matter with this set. But look for that on Wednesday. Until then, be Contra Mundo Pro Mundo.